Hello, Frame Chaser community. Today, I'm going to try my best to explain why the higher Ryzen IPC is not scaling with gaming, and also why increasing core clocks on Ryzen also doesn't scale with gaming. Uh, it's going to be kind of a... Um, it's going to be kind of a rude way of explaining it. I'm going to be using Microsoft Paint here, but you should be able to get the gist of it. Uh, all right, let me go. Let me just start with this. So why is it that Intel chips scale with clock frequency almost linearly? And why is it the Ryzen ones don't? And we're talking specifically in terms of gaming, like, uh, the Ryzen ones will scale in rendering applications with clock speed, but we're, we're focusing on gaming here uh, today on this video. So, let me bring up paint here and... Okay, so we know that... Let me just... That should be thick enough. Yeah, you can see that. Alright. So we know that... Game engines have instruction cycles in them and they request things from GPUs and CPUs in cycles um, which is obviously the, the, the obviously right but the rate at which they request instructions from the CPU is different for every game depending on the engine etc cetera, etc cetera. and for the longest time uh, since you know the last decade or so Instructions have been coded with Intel processors in mind. And you can kind of think of it in terms of width. Uh, like, like an instruction width. So let's say... That, I'm going to use blue for Intel here. Let's say... Actually, wait. I'll use black for generic instruction. Let's say a game engine instruction is this width. Oh my god. I'm not using brush. All right. Is this width? That's not straight at all. Let me, all right, let me use a straight line here. Uh, erase this. All right, it's this width, all right? So let's say that's a game engine clock uh, instruction width. Let's say an Intel chip, oops. Let's say an Intel chip has the exact same width of an instruction for a game cycle right that's an intel instruction cycle now let me move this a bit more oh, it doesn't matter you get the point now i'll use red for ryzen and let's assume a ryzen chip oh come on let's assume a ryzen chip what is it uh, i think they have about 10 15 percent more ipc than skylake so let's just say a Ryzen chip can accept an instruction that's 20% larger. What is that? That, let's, that looks about right there. 20%. So what happens is, let me just stop and start this, is let me just erase this. Oops. I'm terrible with paint. So let's say we have a you know, 10, 900 K at five gigahertz, right? And let's say the instruction cycles, um, bar, it's like, let's say one, two, three, oops, four, five, blah, 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 blah. These are the Intel instruction cycles. This is a terrible representation, but whatever. Okay, now let's say these are the AMD ones. Wait, 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 let me just finish this quickly. These are the Intel ones. Now let's say these are the AMD ones. Each line is about 20% larger. So let's say there, there, there. 
you can kind of already see where I'm going with this. Higher clock speed with less IPC is always going to be better than higher IPC at a lower clock speed for gaming. So you can already kind of see how the Intel chip is actually going to get more instructions more frequently. But the, 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 data, the data of both chips is the same. Right, So they're actually requesting and receiving the same amount of data, but the Intel one is just doing it more frequently in smaller bursts of uh, smaller chunks. And you can also think of these spaces. Um, you can also think of these spaces in between the clock cycles as your latency. So actually, I should have spaced out the Ryzen ones way more, but... So let's say an Intel one has 40 nanoseconds, right? And let's say a Ryzen one has 60 nanoseconds at, at like the best overclocks, which, which I showed in the last video. These gaps are going to be spaced apart 20 nanoseconds more than the Intel chip, right? So if we were going to – actually, let me just redo that quickly. If we were going to redo that – we have to make the IPC 20% larger, but we also have to make the gaps 20% larger. So let's say like here. Yeah. Now you're starting to see what the problem is. Right? They can have all the IPC in the world, but it's just not fast enough. All right. Let's say that's our AMD one. Let me just erase these middle ones here. Okay, now we're going to show the line that shows the game engine and what the game engine is doing. So I'm going to be using Warzone or any kind of Battle Royale as an example, which is, uh, you know, best case scenarios for the Intel chips because... The data is going in and out so fast depending on there's there's 200 players on the map and all the positional data, all the gunfire, all the bullets, all the loadouts, everything in the game is being shoved into the CPU at such a fast rate that it's going to always scale better with the Intel chips. So let me let me demonstrate that. So a game engine, especially a battle royale one, is going to look all messy. It's going to be like one small one, one big one, one small one, a few up here, a few down here, depending on where the characters are, blah, 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 blah. It's going to be a big one, a small one. Maybe this is an airstrike, right? Who knows? It's going to be big, small, big, small, big, small, big, small. None of the instructions that you're going to get from that game are going to be the same width as a Ryzen IPC chip. None of them. So what ends up happening is if, if these first instructions, let's say these first ones here, these ones fit in a Ryzen IPC cycle, right? So all these instructions are going to make it in that first cycle. These ones in the middle here within the latency gap, they're going to have to wait for the next cycle. Even half of this one is going to have to wait, right? So these, this entire section gets pushed over to the next cycle. And that's why you have frame caps with Ryzen chips. They, they just can't process that FPS fast enough. It, oh, it's always waiting for this next cycle to happen. So on the other hand here, if half an instruction is on the previous, let me see here. Yeah, if half of this instruction makes it, but half of it doesn't, it's still one instruction. It actually has to get pushed over to this one, to the next one to reach the entire thing. And you can see how that will start... 
cascading as it goes along. And it'll reach a point where the cache will store so much of that information, blah, 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 blah. And let's say it'll reach a FPS cap of 180. And it just can't process the data faster than that. It just can't do it. Uh, what What's going to be happening with Ryzen 4000 chips? These red lines are going to be even wider. What did they say? They're saying another 10 to 15% IPC on uh, Zen, Zen 4? No, Zen 3, sorry. Those naming schemes get me confused. So Ryzen 4000 chips, let's say it looks like this. We're almost doubling the IPC of an Intel chip, right? Is that going to scale with gaming? No, because the instructions for the games are still so small and so frequent and so bunched up. So instead of the, the, uh, instead of the frame cap being like 180, it might be able to fit some more instructions in there that it might miss, like this one over here. So if the red line goes all the way over here, it might fit now. So now the frame cap might be, you know, 200 instead of 180. Uh, I hope I hope this makes sense the way I'm explaining this. So what what AMD has to do in order to get more like remove these latency bottlenecks? They have to increase the clock speed. Not just the clock speed, they have to actually increase the fabric clock. Like they have to all these numbers that I'm mentioning, core clock, fabric clock, memory speed, latency, they all reduce this gap in the middle here to be tighter. You want this gap to be as tight as possible. So do you know, like, you know, those, um, those APUs in the laptops, the 4800U or whatever? Those are monolithic design Zen 2 chips. They pretty so like they don't have they don't have an IO die to bounce out to and then bounce back to, right? They just have direct access to the memory. They essentially cut this number in half by doing that. And that's why those laptop uh Ryzen chips game better than these these desktop ones. Like if you go look at the benchmark, it's insane. Those things are absolutely crazy at gaming. Because they cut their latency in half by making a monolithic die. Um, that's why the Intel chips are just so much snappier and quicker at getting that data in and out, right? Um, now, this example is based off of just one core. So, if you had, you know, eight cores, you would just make eight of these blue lines. And then the black bars would just be in between all of them. And... Well, not all of them. That actually depends on the game engine. Some game engines will only have four black lines, five black lines, six black lines. So that's why having a Ryzen chip with 16 red lines, it's it can't make up all of those. Like, if you have, a, if you have more cores on a CPU, you can fill in these gaps by doing this with the cores. Right? So instruction here goes to this one. Instruction here goes to this one. But the problem with that is the game engine has to be aware to do that. And they are not aware to be doing that with that many cores. So what may happen... Let me just erase all this. What may happen with the next-gen consoles when they come out and they actually have Zen 2 chips in them? They might make the instructions as thick as the AMD chips do. Like, that might be a game instruction. And this might be... Oh, man. Game instruction. Ryzen instruction. And they'll be at the exact same frequency. And the developers can do that. So there wouldn't be as many uh, cache and memory misses, right? Um, the only problem with that theory still is the console chips are also going to be monolithic designs. So they don't have an I.O. die to be bouncing in and out of. They just have direct access to the memory. So they're going to be performing more like the, the 4700 or 4800U or G or whatever the heck that model number is. They're going to be performing more closely to that than they will be the Zen 2 chips. 
So that's kind of food for thought on that. Like the, the Zen 2 chips are even going to be laggier than the console ones. Um, so let me show you what happens with the Intel chip, right? Let's say this is the, the, the black lines are the game engine and the blue lines are the Intel cycles. If let's say this command gets missed, this one right here. Oh, oops. Let me get the pencil. If this command, if this very first command gets missed, it, it hits the next cycle way faster instead of waiting around for the next IPC um, from Ryzen, right? So... Smaller little lines like this in much faster low latency bursts are going to be so much better for gaming because they just don't have to wait for information. Now, why the Ryzen chips scale so well with productivity workloads and rendering and etc, etc, etc is because there's no random data to process. There's no user input there's no battles there's no people dropping on parachutes there's no 200 players the bar looks like this let's see i'll use purple for rendering let's say you have a 30 minute video that you need to render on a cpu the bar just looks like this that's it it's just fully loaded data on the cache and memory and as 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 fast as, or I should say as, as wide. Oh man, I keep messing this up. As wide as these IPC cycles can get, it's just gonna, it's just gonna take chunks from that rendering job like this. So you always get a full data cycle out of your IPC. So when, when uh, Zen 3 comes out and you have IPCs that are like this, you're going to see some pretty insane Cinebench scores, right? But are you going to see scaling in games? Not yet. Not right now. It's, it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, my theory on what's going to happen with Zen 3 is let me just do this here let's see this is the game engine cycles instructions etc 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 the ryzen 4000 chips are gonna have let's say this much ipc from 10 percent but they're also gonna have a unified ccx so as long as the game only uses up to 16 threads or eight cores, the gap between the lines gets cut in half from Zen 2. That's where we're going to see some pretty insane gains. If we're talking about a game that uses more than 16 threads, let's say, I think Shadow of the Tomb Raider does, I believe. And let's say it's not smart enough to localize the uh, instructions per CCX of eight cores. You're all of a sudden going back to double the spit, double the width. And you're right back to where you started with uh, Zen IPC and instructions. So what might happen on the next gen Ryzen chips is let's say you're playing Warzone and you have a 4950X, uh, 16 cores. You already know that there's going to be two CCDs with eight cores each, unified CCXs, right? Maybe you would have to use a program like, what do they call it? Um, thread Lasso or uh, Core Lasso? I'm not sure. what I can't remember what it's called. You can pretty much isolate an app to a certain number of cores. So you would go into your Ryzen Master find out which core numbers belong to that one CCX of eight cores, and you would assign Warzone, all this data, you would assign it to this CCX. And you, wouldn't, you won't let it get out to the IO die and then back into the other CCX. 
and get all that latency back that you just tried to improve, right? If if Ryzen actually made in a 16 core monolithic die with no IO die, obviously that would be expensive as hell. We're talking like that's I mean, hell, I guess Intel does it with their uh 10980XE for a thousand bucks, but uh, the mesh architecture is garbage for the most part. It, it's just too laggy as well. But um, if they actually made a monolithic die with 16 cores, no I.O. die, just like the laptops, man. And, and then imagine imagine having all 16 of those cores and then disabling hyperthreading or uh, SMT. And then having no latency on top, oh, oh, Billy, that's what that's what AMD really needs to do here. They need to. The, okay, the, the other the other problem is they went the chiplet route because it's just so much cheaper and more efficient to manufacture, and it's so much better at detecting faults in the silicon. But there's just so many gaming drawbacks to that design of having to constantly go out of the chip and back in and back out and constantly bounce around all these CCXs and all these... You have like four CPUs talking to each other and trying to go over a fabric. It's, it's just a disaster. But that doesn't matter for rendering because the, the line is solid, right? It doesn't matter. It'll take whatever it can get because it has a solid line. So, anyway, I wonder if that explained anything or if that actually made any sense at all. It was kind of a crazy uh, drawing. But that's what AMD needs to do if they want to win gaming. I honestly don't believe... So, here's my, here's my prediction for Ryzen 4000. If the game uses 16 threads or less and you can lock it to one CCD it would pretty much perform like a 9900K. Actually, it would perform better than a 9900K because you could use the other CCX of eight cores for all your streaming background tasks and all that crap. So you would actually have eight full dedicated cores with no lag for the game. Um, if the game starts scaling beyond 16 threads, we're going to go back to Intel being king again. Because their monolithic dies are just like the the Comet Lake one, the ten cores. That's a ten core monolithic die with a ring bus. So there's no lag there at all. Every single core communicates fast as hell to the other one. They're expensive for Intel to make. Don't get don't like they uh like like those are those must be really expensive to make because they can't make any errors whatsoever. But. Uh, yeah, if 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 it if the let's say a game for some reason scales to twenty threads and not sixteen, the ten nine hundred K is gonna destroy the Ryzen four thousand chip. That's my prediction anyway. But in the near future, I don't see games scaling past sixteen since the next gen consoles are gonna be sixteen. So I think the forty nine fifty X next gen is gonna be the the magical spot, or the forty eight hundred X with eight cores. I honestly wouldn't do the 4900X because then it would, you would have two six cores, it, which is still good. Like six core gaming is still fine, but eight cores is really what you want for gaming. Anyway, that was kind of my little video on why IPC is not scaling and clock speed is king. Um, I hope that educated some people on... Even all the progress AMD is making, why Intel can still win on 10-year-old technology. It's it's just because that it's just it doesn't have the latency. That's all it is. It just doesn't have the lag. Alright, guys. If you like this content, please subscribe. I need to try and hit a hundred by the end of July. That's my goal. If you could help me with my goal, I'd be really appreciated. And if you have any questions, hop on the Discord. Uh, ask me anything that you need. I'd gladly answer. And yeah, see you guys later. Thanks for coming.